we will now start talking about the many applications of the eigenvalue decomposition. And most of the applications have a common theme that underpins them. And that's eigenvalues and eigenvectors tell us everything we need to know about the matrix in the simplest and perhaps the most insightful way and without any loss of information. After all, knowing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we can apply the matrix to any vector and we can even reconstruct the entries of the matrix itself. So once again, no loss of information, but wonderful insight. So here's the first example of what you can do easily if you know the eigenvalue decomposition of a matrix. For example, you can square a matrix, and here is why. If A is X lambda X inverse, then A squared is of course A times A. And we can write A as X lambda X inverse, that's one A. And let's write next to it the other A, which is also X lambda X inverse. All right, and now we notice something very nice and satisfying, and that's X inverse meets X. And of course, this product can be carried out first by associativity, and because X inverse times X equals identity, the two X's simply drop out. And it's a very satisfying thing to observe, because I think when you see this for the first time, you might be a little bit frustrated, and you say, if only x was next to x inverse, we could cancel them and things would be even simpler. Well, thank God they're not next to each other and don't cancel here. Because when we put a next to a, now they come together and now they cancel. And we can learn so much more than we would have had the life been simpler. And good thing it isn't. So x inverse meets x, the both x's drop out, the both, both matrices drop out. Lambda meets lambda and becomes lambda squared. And of course, lambda squared is exceedingly easy to evaluate. That's another nice thing that's very satisfying. Of all matrices on the board, which one would you rather square? Well, of course, it's lambda, because multiplying any two diagonal matrices amounts to multiplying their diagonal entries together. And in the case of squaring of a diagonal matrix, you just have to square each one of its diagonal entries. Nothing could be simpler. It's very quick and efficient. So the whole thing becomes x lambda squared x inverse. Let me make sure that it fit on the board. It fit perfectly. And now from this expression we can draw a plethora of conclusions. First of all, we notice that a squared has the same eigenvectors as a, and its eigenvalues are the squares of the eigenvalues of a, and that's because this is essentially the eigenvalue decomposition for the matrix A squared. And even if we didn't call it that, we still have a diagonal matrix wrapped in a similarity transformation. And even prior to our discussion of the eigenvalue decomposition, we knew that when we saw something like that, the eigenvalues were on the diagonal and the eigenvectors were the columns of the matrix X. Well, in any case, it's the conclusion that we've come to before, but before we had to do it with our ingenuity and original thinking. Now we get it for free, algebraically. And of course, this would work with any integer power of n, including negative integers, so inverses of a, as we'll see next. But I would just like to mention that, of course, this is not necessarily an effective way of squaring a matrix. If you just had to square a matrix, of course, it's easier to multiply a by a than to find its eigenvalues, form the eigenvalue decomposition, which will, of course, include inverting a matrix, which is harder than squaring a matrix in the first place. And then the easy part, squaring the elements on the diagonal. And then another part, which is multiplying out these three matrices. So from the practicality point of view, it's easier to carry out the multiplication directly. But of course, as you might be beginning to gather, it's not so interesting as uh, having a squared itself, it's not as interesting as having its eigenvalue decomposition. So this approach, even though it's harder, it provides not only a squared, actually it doesn't provide so much a squared as it does its eigenvalue decomposition, which the more you interact with it, the more you realize it's more valuable than the matrix itself. So yes, 
this does have practical applications as well, even as far as raising matrices to higher powers. And this is especially true if you need not only a squared by a cubed, a fourth, and all the other powers of a, or many more powers of a, then it's really worth it to pay the price once and compute the eigenvalue decomposition, and then just go to town raising the power on this middle matrix, which is diagonal. Let's talk about A inverse now. And if you thought this was satisfying, A inverse will be triply more satisfying. So our claim is that A inverse has the same pattern with lambda raised to the negative first power. So let's test that. Let's multiply x, which is x lambda x inverse, by the matrix that we now suspect of being A inverse, which is has the same form, but lambda to the negative first power. So this right here is A. And this is our mystery matrix to be determined. But let's see what happens now. What happens now is that X inverse meets X. Super satisfying. We had two products, two matrices in a product. They simply drop out. And now we have lambda meeting lambda inverse. They come together drop out, bringing x next to x inverse, which of course drops out, leaving nothing but the identity matrix. x times x inverse is the identity matrix. So the entire product disappears completely, everything cancels, and it could only cancel if things were in this order. So what may have seemed like a bummer at first is actually the most glorious thing. Everything drops out, so we must conclude that this is the inverse of this matrix, and therefore, this is A inverse. And of course, this diagonal matrix is easy to invert. How do you invert a diagonal matrix? Well, assuming all of the entries on the diagonal are not zero, otherwise the matrix wouldn't even have an inverse, you just replace every number with a reciprocal. So just as easy as raising it to any other power. So there you go. Now we have an expression for inverse and any integer power. And this approach can also be used to define not just A squared, A cubed, A inverse, and not so much define as calculate, but actually to define any function of the matrix A, including e to the A and sine of A. And the definition would go, just apply that function to the diagonal entries. And it seems a little bit frivolous at first, but it's consistent with all the other powers and actually ends up being a whole lot meaningful and have a whole lot more practical application than applications that you may think at first. So for example, here is definition of e to the a. All right, you would write it as x times e to the lambda, and I'll write in a moment what it is, times x inverse and simply define e to the lambda as e raised to the first eigenvalue and so forth and e raised to the last eigenvalue. So that's my definition of e to the lambda. All I can say now is that it's consistent with squaring a, inverting a, and therefore raising it to any integer power. It's consistent, but this actually becomes extremely meaningful can be used with any function, sine, log, you name it, right? It has fantastic connections to calculus. This is very consistent with what you would think e to the a means in terms of calculus. We won't talk about it now, but we'll revisit it. And by calculus, I mean from the point of view of infinite series. And can also be defined for other functions. If I haven't mentioned it already, e to the a, sine of a, square root of a, which we did in the exact same way. And all of these functions of A, by virtue of having this form, have the same eigenvectors as the matrix A, and their eigenvalues are related to the eigenvalues of A by these functions. So there you go. The eigenvalue decomposition helps us with raising the matrix to any integer power, any non-integer power, and actually applying any function to the matrix. This is in the future. All of this is very much now. And we will now use this idea of easily raising the matrix to any power in the next video to establishing a closed form expression for the nth 
Fibonacci number. It's a very beautiful and I would even say glorious application of the eigenvalue decomposition. I'm very excited to now be on this topic, one of my favorites.